Great news, lads. We're sold out. <laughs> All right. Now I just know this is going to be the best performance ever. <sighs> What's the matter, Paul? You all right? I don't think so. You see, lad, this is going to sound so incredibly corny. But I just heard this voice. Voice? What voice? I don't know. And what exactly did that voice say, may I ask? My name. Just my name. Paul. It was whispering it. I don't know why, but I do know that this voice is giving me a headache. Somehow. That doesn't make any sense. A voice is giving you a headache? I know it doesn't make sense, Ringo, because... Here I am, minding my own business, and then I hear this female voice in my head, and then it hurts. It felt like... like... Like what? Like... Someone's calling me. Calling you? Paul, could you at least try to suppress this call... in our concert? I'll try. Meg, welcome to Liverpool, England. Where the Beatles were born. That's a statue of them right there. Isn't it great? Yeah, it is. And that's the statue of Eleanor Rigby. All the lonely people. Where do they all come from? Who knows? There it is! There it is! The cavern! Sweet! We got here in the nick of time! Come on! So this is a Beatles concert. Yep. And that's exactly what we've come for. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, for tonight's presentation at the cavern, we proudly present the Beatles! That was fun! Well, I guess this means you like the Beatles, eh, Meg? <laughs> like them? Sam, they're fantastic! Guys, is it just me? Or are the Beatles running straight at us? Paul, are these the kids that didn't scream you were talking about? <laughs> They are, they definitely are, John. Well, they definitely stand out in this crowd because they're flying. Okay, let me get this straight. We just came out of the Beatles concert and now the Beatles ran directly towards us because we didn't scream in the concert. Did I miss something? The major concern right now is why are we not cracking right now? Because I just jammed my nails in my legs. Well, if we're standing right in front of the Beatles, and the Beatles are standing right in front of us, shouldn't we have an introduction? All right, an introduction. <laughs> um, John, George, Paul, Ringo. I'm Sam Pan. And I'm Calvin O'Keefe. This is Meg Murray, and this is Charles Wallace, Meg's brother. We're all huge fans of you boys. That's good to know, but apparently Paul is a big fan of you a lot because he led us to you. Because we didn't scream. Exactly, he's been wondering about an audience that doesn't scream for a while. Haven't you all? You know, come to think of it, the boy's right. We have been wondering about an audience that doesn't scream. Yeah, the usual audiences only scream at the end of the performance, but these audiences scream during your performances. Yeah, no one wants to live like that. I like this kid already. And now that I see you guys in person, it's so hard to believe that I didn't know who you were. You didn't know who we were before this concert. No, 
My friends wanted to take me to this concert so I could know you. Hmm, now you do know us. Um, Paul, why do you keep looking at this girl? Because her voice sounds familiar. My voice? But that's silly. I didn't even know you. You're Paul McCartney. Ow. Are you alright? Yes, I'm fine. Lads, this girl is the voice that's been calling me. Meg? No way! But how can you hear her if we're all the way in America? You see, kids, before you came to our concert, Paul admitted that he was hearing a female voice in his head that's giving him headaches. So, Paul, ever since I first heard about you, I've been calling you? Yeah, pretty much. Impossible! She didn't even know you before today! Well, it's not impossible anymore, Charles Wallace, because apparently it's been happening! Well, I have to admit, it is kind of impossible for Meg's voice to give me a headache every time she says my name. I unintentionally give you a headache? Yes, Meg, you do, and I know it's not your intention, because you're all the way in America. Yeah, and even Ringo knows that's impossible. He said it's impossible for your voice to give Paul a headache. Oh, so you listen to me then, but when I was locked in my bathroom for a weekend, screaming, no one heard anything? Oh, uh, we heard. <laughs> you think that's funny? Hey, it's not my place to tell you what's funny and what's not. Alright, but don't think that just because you're a girl, I'm gonna let it slide on you. Knock it off, Ringo. She's just trying to have a laugh. He's right. So I suggest you let it slide on her and have done with it. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry, Sam. But, Paul, whenever I mention you, you hear me. Is there any specific reason for that? I don't know. It's just that whenever I hear your voice, you sound like you love me. Love? I didn't even know who you were. Well, I feel like maybe because I hear your voice whenever you say my name. I kind of love you. Really? Guys, it's getting late. We should probably go home. Yeah, I think we better. Meg, come and see us again one day. But I'm American, and I hurt you without meaning to. Well, it doesn't hurt now. Yeah, and you know, lads, I think we should have all these kids back one time. Yeah, I'm gonna agree with that. Come on, Meg! We'll see you all next week.